So a number of years ago, I shot a video with Richard Marsden on how to hold your rapier. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put the link in the description or down at the bottom so you can check it out. Uh, I really like that video. Uh, it, it addressed a lot of the issue I've, I've seen with people and how they hold their swords and discuss creating leverage uh, through the skeletal alignment of your hand when you're gripping your sword. Uh, that grip in specific was designed and developed through years of practice and interpretation and biomechanical analysis of the early Italian rapier texts. But we don't have in any of those a actual description of how to hold your sword. Um, uh, some recent years ago, uh, Rainier and others published a translation of Bondi de Mazo's text from 1699 and in that text is a very specific way of how to grip your rapier. And after reading that text, I changed my grip and started using that method of holding the sword. Uh, and that's now what I use exclusively for uh, my rapier. So I find that Bondi Damaso's grip does all of the things skeletally that my old grip does. Um, but it applies in a slightly different fashion. It takes a little while to get used to, but uh, once I settled on the script, I use it exclusively, and I'll discuss a couple of reasons why afterwards. The way this grip goes is he's very explicit on how to hold it. The first thing we do is put our thumb on the flat of the inside quillen block, so our thumb goes there, right? After that, we take the space between the two knuckles of the index finger and we put that on the flat of the quillen block on the other side. So we're pinching the sword between our fingers. Uh, he says that the index finger should extend uh, so that it just barely does not go below the blade. So, so the way I do this is I just let my finger kind of curl under so it's just touching the front corner of the blade, but it isn't wrapped underneath so that my finger is not supporting the weight of the sword. I'm not holding the sword with my finger. It should just be sitting next to the blade. And then we take the body of the hand, the big meaty part of the hand, and we put it on top of the grip, right? So we thumb on the, on the quillen block, the flat of the finger on the quillen block, the index finger just barely touching the sword, and then the whole rest of the hand goes on top and then we wrap the other three fingers loosely around the grip. So now my hand is sitting on top of the sword and that's what's stopping it from really falling out. Uh, the weight and gravity of the blade is actually going up into my hand. I'm not really gripping it with my fingers, I'm just pinching the quillen block. And so this creates, when we look at it um, straight on, it creates a straight line between my hand and my forearm so that as I lower that sword into that Italian third position, it's not really resting on my fingers. It's resting on my hand. And what happens is the, the whole meat of that, the whole grip of that sword sits in the meat of my palm. And now I have complete control over the strong of my sword. It does all of those things where skeletally I have dominance in the strong of my blade. Whereas if I were to grip up with that sword and hold it so that the pommel goes inside my wrist, all of that pressure into the strong, into the strong goes into my wrist. When you push up on it, it's very difficult to hold the sword. But when I put my hand on top, I can now push down and I get a lot of excellent strength and I'm not using any of my fingers to actually hold the sword. They're just there to stabilize it. Um, some of the differences between this grip and my old grip, uh, my old grip had a lot more of the knife edge of the hand on the top of the sword so that it was held in this fashion. So the thumb wasn't anywhere near the grip. But now when I shift this to that Bondi Damaso grip, the, the meat of my hand, my thumb is, is on the grip, but it's mostly sideways to the grip. And if I had a slightly shorter grip, the pommel would sit kind of right in the nook of my palm, which is really what you see in a lot of the historical texts of where the pommel should sit. I had a slightly long grip, so now it sits a little bit here, but 
it's in line with my hand. It's not sitting uh, to the inside of my wrist. It's in line with my forearm, and this is what allows me to create real dynamic stability. So when I sit in terzo with this grip, my hand is in front of my leg, and my arm is aligned with the blade, and everything is here. If I were to kind of naturally hold my sword, it'd be almost like I'm riding a bicycle, where uh, where my hands are my hand is gripping on top of the grip like like I would with a, a bicycle. You don't run your fingers up underneath a bike grip. You put your hands on top, and that's exactly how I'm holding my sword. I'm just now pushing with my thumb and letting my wrist rotate so that the point gets straight with my opponent and it's right in front of my leg. And my pommel actually points kind of towards the outside of my hip when I'm in this terzo, which is really actually what you see in Capoferro and Giganti and Fabris and those types of uh, treaties, as well as in Bondi de Mazo. Um, when I go into Secunda and I rotate that, you notice I'm not shifting anything in my hand. My hand is still exactly in the same place, only my thumb is now on the bottom, and that's really what's supporting this action in Secunda. So now my shoulder all the way out to my hand, and my thumb is what's sit what my sword is sitting on, right? And then when I rotate into fourth or quarta, uh, I now I get the same kind of action where my thumb is kind of leading this blade. It's sitting in, the t in my hand, but my thumb is what's holding it down. If I rotate my hand out, the, the, the whole grip starts to slip out of my fingers and you end up with that with people doing this lifted fourth because they don't have strength and stability in their strong. So in this grip, just like with that other grip, I can make a small rotation and elongate that. It flattens out as I move, but it never leaves my hand. My hand stays straight and stable that whole time. It's also loose and flexible enough so that when I roll into Prima, I can actually rotate my hand out and loosen my grip completely and still have control of the sword. So if I need to, depending on what angle I need to make with Prima, I can just rotate that all the way to vertical and I can loosen that grip and have a very distinct flexibility in how much angulation I make with my Prima. So it can be a short Prima or very high Prima, but my arm's not even really moving, just my hand is turning to accomplish that. So with this grip, we have Prima, Secunda, Terza, Quarta, all very easily managed without changing the grip of my hand, and the weight of the sword doesn't start to pull in one direction or another. The big thing that I really like in this grip over the old grip that I used to use, especially the two-finger version of the old grip, which had my hand uh, on top of the sword and two fingers over the quilling, um, is that this one finger grip is much more fluid when making circular cuts. So that I can make a circular cutting action much easier than if I have two fingers over and now a lot of that weight and pressure of the sword and the turning motion happens in my forearm, which is very strenuous to me and not as fluid as being able to roll cuts easily from the wrist and making those uh, trombozones or or just regular cuts, whatever have you. Uh, and when I look at the text or look at the how the, the people are situating their hands inside their swords, I tend to see the hand feels a lot further back than with that two finger grip. Uh, even if you've got a nice stable grip on it, the pictures tend to show uh, the hand a lot further back on the grip. That to me, tends to speak to why this grip seems to make a lot of sense. So this starts to move into how I hold my dagger in accompaniment to the rapier. And I actually haven't changed this. This is how I've always held my dagger. I didn't cover it in the other video. But the way I hold my dagger is with my thumb right up there next to the top part of the flat. It's very similar to where to situating my thumb on that quillen block. It's right on the quillen block. I've got my thumb in that space, my hand is on top of the dagger, and I can make easy cuts with the dagger, which is exactly what Giganti asks us to do. And so now I can use the forearm and the wrist to make easy cuts with my dagger. So one, two, three, four. 
as my primary cut. So the dagger, so when I situate myself in guard, there's my rapier in its terza, and then I can bring my shoulder forward and situate my dagger near my sword in its own version of terza that creates a nice little triangle, so there's no way through my weapons. And I can create easy cuts with the dagger up, down, and over from the, that, that neutral position where my uh, point is pointed at my, da at my rapier, my hands are in the same positions and I can rotate them together and create all of my different defenses and I'm still utilizing that same grip and I'm actually utilizing the same grip on both of my tools. So here we are, rapier and dagger and terza. So that's it for how to hold your rapier and your dagger accompanying it. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you have it, it's a really fluid grip. You don't use any energy to actually hold your sword. You're really just pinching it and letting the weight and gravity of sword do all of the work for you. And then wherever you want your point to go, you're kind of just leading with your thumb. Wherever you point your thumb, that's where your point's going to go. So you end up in uh, second or you end up in fourth. And wherever you point that thumb, that's where your point is going to end up going. Uh, it takes a little while, but I've loved it, and, uh, and it's really fluid in all of the cuts in various different ways. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, hit me up here or on social media. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, get any feedback, um, and stay safe and train well.